All right, here we're gonna talk about the antiarrhythmics, and we're gonna be talking about class 1B, represented by this B over here with the gun. The B with the gun. We'll call this the gun B. Gun B for 1B. And this B over here is hijacking the arithmetic class. He doesn't like arithmetic, so he's terrorizing the students who all ran away, as well as the teacher. So he's anti-arithmetic. Anti-arithmetic for anti-arithmic. And again, the fact that we're talking about a classroom over here is, is to help us remember that we're talking about the class. Class 1B, anti-arithmic. So in this scene, we're going to talk about the mechanism of action, the clinical use, and the adverse effects of the class 1B antiarrhythmic drugs. Let's begin. Let's begin by taking a look at this ceiling over here. We notice this cane over here in the ceiling. This is the cane that produces light for the room. It gives them light. This is the cane light, or the light cane. Light cane for lidocaine. One of the class B antiarrhythmic drugs is lidocaine. And then we see Godzilla over here, who's very mad. We can see that he's really cool because he's a teen. Mad Godzilla teen for Maxilla teen. Okay, now that we've spoken about the different types of class 1B antiarrhythmic drugs, let's talk about the mechanism of action. So we see over here that in the arithmetic class, the teacher got a little bit sidetracked and started talking about the heart. But we see that he shaded the ventricles as well as the Purkinje fibers in pink because that was the class discussion today. Purkinje fibers and the ventricles. This helps us remember that class 1B antiarrhythmic drugs work on the Purkinje fibers and the ventricular myocytes, but not on the atrial cells as was in the case in class 1A antiarrhythmic drugs. Now, how do they work? Let's move up for a minute. So here we see that in the classroom, this TV that always has the sodium channel on because this guy is a salt shaker and this is the sodium channel. But we see here that he's very weak. He's not very strong. This is the weak sodium channel. And here again, it's exploding. It's being blocked. This is the weak sodium channel that's blocked, which helps us remember that the class 1B antiarrhythmics work by blocking sodium channels, but they do it weakly. They don't bind very strongly. And that's why if you take a look over here, where yellow is representing the slope of the new graph, that the slope in phase zero is not as strong as that seen in 1A. And we also see the shorter action potential. But the mechanism of this is not really known. Now, what are they used for clinically? Well, they don't really cause changes to the ECG. They're actually only used in cases of, let's say, acute ventricular arrhythmias, especially post myocardial infarction, and digitalis induced arrhythmias. And that's why if you take a look over here, the teacher loves these cute digits. Cute digits. Cute for acute, acute ventricular arrhythmias. And digits for digitalis induced arrhythmias. So again, the class 1Bs are best for post-myocardial infarction and in the case of digitalis-induced arrhythmias. Okay, now let's end off with some adverse effects. So, lidocaine and megxilotine produce different adverse effects. We'll put them together. We see over here that the teacher is actually just a brain. He's a CNS, a central nervous system, and he's depressed because his class was hijacked. CNS depression is an adverse effect of the antiarrhythmias. It can also cause CNS stimulation. It can cause seizures and other CNS effects. And over here we see the teacher's pet heart, who's also depressed. This reminds us of the cardiovascular depression, which the class 1B antiarrhythmic drugs can cause. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the scene on the class 1B antiarrhythmics. Take care.